So here we are in Newcastle upon Tyne and the ghosts of Get Carter are everywhere. It's been 40 years since Mike Hodges' British gangster classic was made and it's always had a cult following but seems to have got even more popular in the four decades that has passed. We're up here to visit some of Jack Carter's former haunts to see how much or how little Newcastle upon Tyne has changed since Jack Carter came to town seeking vengeance for his brother's death. As you saw from the opening credits, we travelled from the airport and with Jack being a well-off gangster, these days he'd probably flown in and skipped the train altogether. Right then. I'm off to the races. So here we are at the Newcastle race course, and isn't it funny how so little changes in 40 years? This is where Jack says to Eric the famous line They're still the same. Piss holes in the snow. Still got a sense of humour. So here we are with someone who knows a lot more about Kit Carter than most, a TV producer, a media historian, and now a tour guide, Chris Phipps. It was a perfect backdrop for Jack Carter to come back to. It wasn't picturesque. Kane described it as, I think, as Charlotte Bronte meets Charles Dickens, written by Edgar Wallace, and that's a brilliant description. The film captured um, a changing city at a very important Polit you know, political time, which has been explored more recently in Our Friends in the North by, by Peter Flannery. I d obviously, I, I, I think that Newcastle's changed for the better. So here we are in South Benwell on what used to be Frank Street. This is where Jack comes to his dead brother's house. It's no coincidence that his dead brother was called Frank. There's a classic picture of Michael Caine standing here with the big Dunstan power station behind him. That was knocked down years ago and built upon it was a monstrosity of another kind, the Metro Centre. Michael Caine said that when he was filming here, he, quote, had never seen poverty like it, unquote. Even as Get Carter was being made, rows of houses in this area were being prepared for demolition. Unfortunately, not a lot has changed around here, even though a lot of the buildings have been demolished. There's still a very run-down feeling about the place. We're now standing at the scene of the dance hall where Jack chases Thorpey into the basement and traps him in the toilet. Although the appearance of the building hasn't changed in recent years, the names have. It was called the Oxford Galleries, and that changed to the Oxford, and then Tiffany's, and then the Studio, and then Ritzy's, and then the Icon, and now the more blandly named Liquid. One thing this part of Newcastle has been famous for was its Blue Tile Initiative. It might not look like it, but back in 1994, the Blue Tile Initiative was used to define a new public space. Sadly, the blue carpet always seemed a little bit, well, grey. And it never really invigorated the John Dobson corridor as a council would like it to be known. Just round the back of here, as they would have you believe in Get Carter, is where Jack stays. It's actually a two mile hike away from here in Gateshead, and that's where we're off to next. So this is Coburg Street in Gateshead, and it's quite a walk from that dance hall. This is where the Las Vegas guest house is situated. This is a major location throughout Get Carter, and it's where the memorable scene happens, where Jack comes to the doorway with a shotgun, stark naked, much to the surprise of the old lady next door. Hope she's got understanding neighbours. We'll see you when you've got your drawers on. Nowadays, it's a quiet residential area, not far from the town centre. In 1971, this was a derelict wasteland. Now, you need a permit even to park here. We're now standing on Newcastle's High Level Bridge, or as it was known in Get Carter, the Iron Bridge. This is where Jack is tricked into meeting Margaret and is caught up by the doorless gangsters. Peter's very upset about his car. You've got a shit all over you. The architecture of this structure really is beautiful and the bridge curves slightly around to the right, and when the light bounces off the arches, it really is a spectacle to behold. The gangsters would have had a hard time getting around here these days, as the council have made this road into a lights control bus lane only. It's from here that Jack's chased down to the long stairs, and that's where we're off to next. This is Newcastle Long Stairs, just a stone's throw away from the quayside. It's one of the very few places in the North East that hasn't changed very much since the film was made. Jack Carter is chased down here by
by Con McCarty and Peter the Dutchman, where he's saved down at the bottom next to the Guildhall. It's got quite an oldy world feeling to it down here, out of the way of Newcastle City Centre, and quite creepy and eerie, seeing as though it's away from all the normal hustle and bustle in the, in the town. From down here, you get a great view of the high-level bridge running over the Tyne. And speaking of bridges, we're off to the most iconic one of them all next, Newcastle's Tyne Bridge. We're now standing on Newcastle's iconic Tyne Bridge, and just over that side of the bridge is where Jack was saved by Geraldine Moffat and a stylish two-seater sunbeam. If you took the bridges away from the Tyne, you would not recognise the quayside from what it was in 1971. It's dramatically changed since then. Boats used to come from all over the world to dock on the Tyne, and warehouses were everywhere to be seen. That was until the death of manufacturing and the coal industry. The 80s and 90s brought with it a massive re regeneration programme, which brought with it new bars, clubs and hotels. But there is still some space for culture, with the sage looking glorious in the sunlight, and the Baltic providing some culture through the arts. The location is rare in the fact that the buildings that were there in 1971 are still standing. Give a few a new shiny bollards and some trees, the scene itself is basically the same. So here we are in North Blythe. And this is where the final chase sequence begins, which ultimately sees the death of Jack and Eric. It's here that Michael Caine utters the famous movie line, You couldn't win an second spoon race, Eric. Shut off! In Get Carter, we jump 13 miles from the Newcastle Quayside, right here to the industrial coastland of South East Northumberland. As you can see in the movie, the staiths here used to be three stories high, with railway lines taking coal from the pits to huge boats that used to dock right here. These run down the coast for about half a mile, but all that changed in the 1980s when vandals set fire to the staiths. With the death of the coal industry, these staiths stand as a skeleton reminder of times gone by. Now they're used to move the occasional boat off a local fisherman to cast off into the harbour. Now Blythe is a tight-knit community, so we're going to talk to one resident who can remember when Get Carter came to town. So what can you remember about the day when Get Carter came to film? Well, it was a nice, fine, sunny Sunday morning and everybody from the island, all the people were out watching them. And um, the, you see the scene in the film where the car comes down the road and it stops here. And we watched a bit where he gets out the car, picks up the gun and a bottle of whiskey and puts it in his pocket. And then he goes down the stairs. But of course, the stairs were a lot higher then. So did any of the locals get to meet the actors themselves? Yes, we did. We all went into the club afterwards for a drink and Michael Caine and Ian Henry were in and the crew. What's changed in Blythe since 1971? Well, the states for a start, they were working states. Um, and the port here now is here. It used to be across at Blythe. That used to be um, where the, you got the ferry go across the river for to do your shopping and whatnot, but of course that's finished now and the, uh, the harbour have opened this up as like a, a depot for loading facilities and whatnot. Amazingly, Jack jumped over the dunes in North Blythe to land here, 40 mile down the north coast in Blackhall. This has changed more than most scenes in the film, as back in 1971 the beach was black with coal. Since then, £10 million has been spent removing the huge conveyor system that used to dump coal into the North Sea. Jack did avenge his brother's death, but it was Jack himself that made the big exit and his body lay in the water. They certainly did get Carter, but nobody will ever forget Carter. Somebody somewhere Looking for someone 